What's going on guys? Welcome back for another edition of Two Minute Tuesday, except this one's gonna be a little bit more like 12 minutes. Let's be real. So today we wanted to cover a topic that we get asked about a lot. How do you make sneaker mock-ups? How do you do designs on Photoshop? Can I create mock-ups on my iPad? And those are some things that we wanted to cover today. So we're gonna be walking you through creating a mock-up on Photoshop with a blank Google image. And then we're also gonna have some fun playing with an app called Procreate on an iPad. And what we're gonna do with that is just take a picture of a shoe that you plan on working on and just really go to town with the designing, with the stylus, the Apple Pencil, and the iPad. There's some really cool things that you can do. So when you're working with these apps like Photoshop and Procreate, I feel the need to preface this by saying there's a million different ways that you can use these apps. There's so many different commands. There's so many different ways you can do the same exact thing. So today I'm just gonna be walking you guys through my process for it. So first up, I'm gonna show you guys how to create this Mewtwo Nike Vapor Untouchable cleat. Let's go ahead and get things started. So we're just gonna head on over to Google Images and search up whatever cleat or sneaker you wanna use. I'm gonna do this Nike Vapor Untouchable 3, and then our first task is gonna be just eliminating the background and completely isolating the cleat. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. I'm just gonna use a magic wand selection and delete the white from our background. There's a little bit to clean up underneath the sole, a little bit more white, and I'm also gonna delete this shadow too. After that, the next thing that I want to do is start to isolate a couple things from the cleat on some separate layers, such as the sole plate, the swoosh, and the laces. These are things that I'm going to alter later, and I just want to have them on some separate layers on top of all the imagery that we're going to be placing on here so I can still see where everything's at, and it just helps me with sizing of characters and backgrounds and things like that. So there's a lot of different ways that you can isolate these things. I like to use the polygonal lasso. Uh, it's just really simple for me to just kind of quickly click around each thing that you want to do. You could also do this with the magic wand or the pen tool, a lot of different ways to do this type of stuff. So after we have these things isolated on some separate layers, I'm going to go ahead and search up our character Mewtwo. One thing that I like to do is just add the word vector on top of whatever you're searching up and then you tend to get some higher quality resolution images which are just going to be better overall for you to use and search through. After that I'm just going to go ahead and size up where I want this Mewtwo character to go on our cleat and then I'm just going to turn the entire background of the cleat into a purple. It's not going to be what we're going to use but you could just start to see things a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead back over to Google Images and just search up a galaxy background and we're going to go Go ahead and throw this on top of that purple that we just did and uh, I'm just going to use the magic wand tool again to select everything that's not part of that purple and delete that from the galaxy background. So now we have this galaxy background sitting on the entire upper of this cleat. Looks really cool with the Mewtwo already. Then in order to get our Mewtwo character to pop a little bit more, I'm gonna do a stroke right around him. So you'll see me use this effects button down here. There's a lot of different options. Uh, you'll see me do a lot of color overlays and this stroke option down here just to get Mewtwo to pop a little bit more. Now I want to make the Mewtwo pop even more against the background, so what I'm going to do is just search up a Cosmic Blast on Google. I think that'll look really cool behind him. So we're going to pull this in, put it directly behind our character, and then we're just going to shift our hue saturation to be a purple that would actually kind of match the character itself. Next, I don't want to keep all of that background from the Cosmic Blast because it does cover up some of our galaxy that we laid down earlier. So I'm just going to do a quick selection around the portion of the Cosmic Blast that I do want to keep and then go ahead and delete the rest. And then I'm also going to take our eraser, turn down the opacity, and then just brush away a little bit more of the background from that Cosmic Blast. I'm also just going to be adding a couple more purple stars to these, so a real quick way that you can do this is just turn down the opacity on a soft brush to something like 80-ish or so, and then we're going to paint in some purple, and then directly on top of that, on a separate layer, we're going to take a lighter purple and then add in those highlights right on top of there. Now moving on to our swoosh and laces, I'm again going to use that effects tab down here, do a color overlay, and I'm just going to select the secondary color of Mewtwo's 
light purple, kind of pinkish, mauve-ish color, and then I'm also gonna do a purple with the laces. And then the last little touch that I wanna do with these is just change that gold sole into kind of a metallic purple. Um, I wouldn't really necessarily be able to paint this metallic purple on the cleat, but it does look really cool in the digital space. And I'm just gonna use the colorize button of the hue saturation tab to quickly change this gold into this metallic purple, and it looks pretty sweet. Then to really complete the graphic portion of this mock-up, I'm just gonna search up a Mewtwo wallpaper from online again and put this directly behind our cleat at a lower opacity just so it's not clashing with the cleat, it's not distracting, but it does help sell this overall Mewtwo vibe. So now for our second pair of the day, I wanna show you guys how to create this red LV Drip Air Force One using an iPad and Procreate. So what we're gonna do first is just go ahead and take a picture of our canvas up against a clean blank wall just so that the design is really gonna stand out. Keep things simple here. Then we're gonna go ahead and load our image directly into the app Procreate. Now, this is an app you can get on the App Store for $9.99, and I promise it is gonna be worth it for you guys. Now, this is another one of those apps that has a ton of commands and takes a little bit of fiddling around with until you can really get a nice workflow going, but there's so many different things that you can do in here. And just starting off, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and trace out the areas where I want this red LV print. So I'm gonna use this monoline brush under the calligraphy section, select the color black, and then just go around and start tracing an outline around the panels where I want the red LV print to go. Then a cool little trick that you can do with the color picker in the top right corner, you can just go ahead and drag that color directly into your outline section and it's gonna fill in the entire thing rather than you having to brush it all in. Now moving on to our swoosh and the drip effect, what I'm gonna do is start tracing out the swoosh and then just start filling in the outline for how I want the drip to actually look beneath the swoosh. And once I have the swish and drip all traced out along with our back tab, what I'm gonna do is that same thing that you saw earlier of grabbing from our color picker up top and just filling in that entire thing. So now I'm gonna head over to Google, search up some red LV print, try to find a nice high quality image of that print. And then we're just gonna go ahead, copy this image and paste it back into Procreate. From there, I'm just gonna size it up, turn down the opacity so I can see it a little bit cleaner up against these two panels where I want the print to go. Size it up just to my liking. And then what I'm gonna do is in the layers panel, I'm gonna select my toe box and my drip effect as the reference layer and then do a selection of those. And then what I'm gonna do is click invert down at the bottom and then I can go ahead and just brush away all the excess print. And now once I turn that opacity back up, you'll see that we're left with just the LV print exactly where we want it to go on the toe box and the swoosh. So the next thing that I wanna do is just go ahead and create a new layer underneath our red LV print. And then you'll see these two little sliders here on the side. These actually control the size of your brush and the opacity. So I like to play with these a lot. And then I'm just gonna go around and trace an outline around this drip effect to make it stand out against our white base a little bit more. Once you've made it this far, there's already so many things that you can see and do, such as heading over here to the adjustments panel. I'm gonna play with the hue saturation sliders, and then you could see our red LV print shift to a few other colors, and you could just find one to your liking. And the options are just totally limitless on what you can do and what you can create with an app like this in just a simple picture of whatever canvas you're gonna be working on. Now this would be a great option for you to have if you were ever working directly one-on-one -on -one in person with a potential client as this would be incredible for them to see happen live right in front of them. So in addition to the two options that we've already walked through, we wanted to point out that Angelus has these pre-made mockups that are super cool directly on their website. So what you're gonna do is head over to the FAQs under mockups, you'll see that they have a ton of shoes that already have pre-made Photoshop files. So what you can do with these is load them directly into Photoshop and all of the panels are already on separate pre-named layers so it's super easy for you to sort through and then you could just start planning out your different colors on different panels and it's already done for you. So we had thought about also including one of these in today's tutorial but there just would have been so much to cram into such a tiny little time frame that it's really tough to go over all the nitty gritty details of Photoshop. But if you guys are interested in a longer format tutorial where we show you how we make something like this Joker Jordan one, we would love to hear that feedback from you down in the comments below. 
And something like this is just a great visual for me to have, whether it be to pre-plan out my design and head and actually get it into digital paper or to show it to the client. This is something that's just quick and simple. It doesn't take that long. Something like this is pretty quick. It's only about 15 or 20 minutes or so once you start to get a little bit more efficient at the program. So when would you ever use something like this? Well, when you get to play with the iPad and actually just take a picture of the shoe that you're about to work on, it just feels really cool doing it. It feels even better to me than doing the digital mock-up on Photoshop. You take a picture of the shoe, you just get to actually draw it out. It has this really cool feeling to me and right before you're about to start getting into the painting, um, potentially you're a little bit further in the process and you wanna see how a certain color or design might look here or there. You get to play with the different colors of laces. You take a picture of your completed design and then just throw some different colored laces and the Procreate on there. There's just a lot of cool times where it's nice to have this handy. Or no matter what, people are always gonna be visual and clients will always be requesting mock-ups from you. And this just really comes down to how good you are gonna be at these programs, how realistic you're gonna make your designs, and how quickly you can turn these out, get them back to the customers, uh, just for proof before they go ahead and purchase because they're spending a lot of money on these custom shoes. So a lot of times they're gonna to wanna to see something before they commit. So even if you've never dabbled with either of these softwares, it's still great to have. It's still something that you wanna have in your arsenal and something that you will absolutely utilize no matter your level of skill. So that's all we have for you guys today. As you can tell, we're here in the new studio. It's still in progress. We have uh, a lot of the furniture here, a lot of our desk and all this stuff. Um, I painted our pool table, so that's pretty cool. I can't wait for you guys to see that. And uh, we should be in here real soon, but we hope you guys enjoyed today's video and we will see you guys in the next one.